to any judge. I feel like they, they should consider us the kids. Like, yeah, they did the, the wrong thing, but they should consider that being locked up affects the family, affects the kids, affects the people around them. My mom, she made a mistake. My dad left. That's when my mom got arrested. They took her away. I got angry and mad and just like really upset. I couldn't control my emotions. Since they took my mom away, I didn't give a fuck. So that's when I started to rebel. I didn't pay attention. I didn't do work. I would like skip school, not go to school for like weeks. I would smoke all the time. I would give an attitude to a teacher. The teacher, she said to stay behind. She noticed that I had straight F's in every class. She said, if you don't shape up and don't do your work, you don't want to end up like your mother. You don't want to end up doing things to make money because you didn't get an education to make money. I don't know, I just felt bad. Like, you don't know me. The children that I observed with parents that were incarcerated experienced a lot of emotional trauma. A lot of those kids uh, had acting out behaviors. A parent that's incarcerated creates a higher chance for their own child to be incarcerated as an adult. The cycle of incarceration is repeated. The first time I got in trouble with the law is when I was in sixth grade and they called the cops because there was a bunch of kids that were writing on the walls at school and I was one of those kids. So they took me into the police department and they ended up moving me to this foster home. Once a student has been institutionalized, they carry that identity with them and they also carry that experience with them. And I think that's a mentality that's really hard to shed um, because it becomes part of their identity. The second time I got arrested was when I got in a final school. I ended up moving to a group home and I'm still there. You imagine you have six teenage girls, ages 13 to 18, some of the most intense, like growing up moments in a girl's life. You're in the system, like you're at a residential facility. Even though we try as much as we can to make it home, they're not with their family. And all of those stresses on top of school and pressure to perform and reporting to their social worker, it's a lot. If I got in trouble now, I'll probably get locked up. If I get in trouble with the law, if I run away, if I get under a P test, there's a great chance I could do three years in juvie. Where's Vanessa? Vanessa, I did my tour. You did it so fast. No, let's check in first, and then you do your tour. Why chicken wing? Oh my God, just right here, really fast. Today was a hard day for you. Yes. And you're aware of what happened. I'm not gonna talk about that. I know. But when you got upset and you were outside, what could you have done differently? That's all I wanna know. Well, I said, leave me alone, darling, please leave me alone. Okay. And he leave me alone. When it's good, it's good. And then when it's bad, it's really bad to the point where that was dangerous, you know? And if the neighbors would have called the cops, if somebody else said, no, I saw her mm -hmm. push him, mm -hmm. then you don't get any say. Mm -hmm. The police officer can say, oh, you put your hands on him and write you up and take you to juvenile. You didn't even understand like how serious it was. It was even serious. But the people that were walking... So it's a really scary time and she understands how important it is. She doesn't want to go back to juvenile hall because her mom will be released soon. So within a year, she's looking to be the transition person in her family. I'm trying to stay out of trouble until my mom comes out. For a long time, I blame myself because I feel like if I wasn't there, like I wasn't born, like my mom wouldn't go and struggle and try to make money to, you know, care for me.